So we've got a little bit of a problem. It's not a big problem, it's totally solvable, but a problem nonetheless. As most of you probably know, our business plan here in Houston is to sell closing gifts to realtors here in the area, and then when they give that closing gift to a brand new homeowner with a big, huge, empty home, they're gonna see that we also make furniture. And then based on our good packaging and marketing, they're gonna know to go to our website to find pieces of furniture to fill their brand new home. Now, the issue with that is, we only have one piece of furniture up on our website right now for them to buy, which is better than zero, but it's not as good as two would be. So this week we are working on getting more products onto our website for these brand new homeowners to buy from us. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. So a couple of weeks ago, I sat down on the computer and I designed what we thought would be a really nice neutral design for a work from home desk. Because I don't know if you've noticed, there's a global pandemic going on and a lot of people are working from home. So we thought, it would be really stupid if we didn't have some sort of a work from home desk or some sort of work from home solution posted on our website. Now, it's not completely fair to say that we only have one product on our website. We advertise that we do custom builds, but if you know anything about our business, this go around, we don't really wanna be doing a lot of custom work. Well, maybe custom work isn't the right way to say it. We, we still wanna build custom work, but we wanna make it optimized for scalability. And what we mean by that is we want to use standard sizes, standard finishes, standard like stock material that we can use in multiple different products. I mean, it's great that we can build whatever we want, but the more repeatable we can make it, the easier it's going to be to train employees to then build it. So I started the design with a standard top size. This is going to be the same top size as our coffee tables, uh, our small desk, and a small version of a kitchen table that we're also designing. We just want one top to be the same size for all those pieces of furniture. But this prototype that we're building is a larger version of this desk, and that is a unique tabletop. So not everything is going to be modular like that, but I mean, whatever. It's a prototype. We'll figure it out. That's the whole point. So this top is 72 inches by 28 inches, and it's made out of eight quarter ash. I mean, it's a pretty basic tabletop. I don't know, there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's just a tabletop. So then we got onto the hard part of this build, which was the legs. We started with dimensions from a piece that we've already optimized, and then we were just gonna reuse that for this desk. Basically, the legs from this farmhouse coffee table are three and a half by three and a half, and we wanted to make one really long piece of that milled up lumber so that we can just cut it to length for really any table we need, either the desk or the coffee table, interchangeable parts, Harrison Ford and Harrison Henry Ford, Henry, Henry Ford and all that good stuff.
I'm not good at geometry. The closest I ever came to failing a class in high school was geometry. I just, I'm a visual guy. I, I don't understand why I hate the, I think it's the numbers. I just don't like all the angles and the numbers and subtracting and it just, it, it hurts my brain to think about. And then I got to remember the orientation and everything. It, these legs were hard to design just for me personally. But the cool thing is if I can design it really well one time, I never need to do it again. So the whole goal being we can make all the angles and the measurements round numbers to where we still get a nice looking product, but it's easy to produce. And we can just make a template for it and just mark that on the template and we never have to calculate an angle ever again. That's one of the benefits of optimizing a plan for scalability is that you don't have to do the brute force calculations every time you build something. So in the design process, I was thinking how in the world are we gonna attach these legs to the tabletop? There's no runners, there's no stretchers. I honestly didn't have a clue. I just sort of winged it. I just said, well, we'll mill it up and we'll figure something out. And then I came across the idea of putting some sort of a bracket on these table legs and then screwing that bracket down into the legs and then screwing the, that bracket up into the tabletop also. So I went to Home Depot, bought some metal stock and whipped out the angle grinder and just started making our own prototype. Not gonna lie, this bracket is the shining star from this entire prototype. Like, it's cool that we made the desk and we got the plans for that and everything, but if nothing else, we've got this awesome bracket that we figured out and that's gonna unlock so many possibilities for us making legs and bases in the future for these tables. I mean, they're, they're so good. We had our buddy Richard from 42Fab make us a hundred of these because we already know that we're gonna use this design over and over and over. I'm not gonna put a link or anything to the file. It's literally just a three by five piece of metal with four holes in it. You can figure it out. Right as we were about to finish final assembly and deliver it to the customer, something crazy happened. And in tonight's top story, Houstonians wake up to record low temperatures, mountains of snow and sleet, and blackouts across the area. Houston hasn't seen weather like this in over 30 years. The biggest winter storm that Houston has seen in over 30 years happened to us. The power was out for days. We didn't have water. We didn't know like what we were doing. We had to burn our stock of charcuterie boards in our fireplace to keep us warm because it was 13 degrees outside in Houston. And then right as soon as the power actually came back on, we had to leave for our Air Force jobs for two weeks. That's a total of three weeks. That's almost a month's worth of progress just halted. Welcome to running a business. We finished it up, we sprayed finish on it, and we delivered it. And here's how it turned out. So we're able to get some really good pictures of it. We got it published to the website now. That took a half day's worth of work. And now we've got more products on our website for potential customers to look at. There's a lot that we learned from this project. Number one, the mounting brackets. I already talked about those. That is just revolution. That's really gonna change the game on, on what we can design for our furniture going forward. We also learned how to develop angled legs. I don't know if you've been watching our live streams, but we did angled legs on a buddy's custom furniture set for his living room. and. It was really easy to do the legs then. I could wrap my brain around what was going on. So now, now I need to get back into the desk design and finalize all the dimensions to make them easier. We still wanna keep the final proportions and everything the same, but if I can change the angle or like where the angle splits in the legs and just make it round numbers, it's gonna be a lot easier to build. We also learned how to use a blowtorch on our pipes to unfreeze our water supply. 
There was a lot of learning going on in the last month or two. But anyway, that's basically the development of this new product. If you'd like a behind the scenes look at how we're running our business and the exact numbers on things, join the stud stack. That's where we have a community of other maker business owners and you guys can collaborate together and share your ideas and contracts and invoices and details and what glues you use. And we even post our own personal business plans and more behind the scenes number crunching kind of stuff in there. So you can really start to learn from a community of people who are all doing this together. It's not a bunch of just random armchair experts down in the comments. So if you're watching this part of the video, hit subscribe. We'd love to have you join us as we start our furniture business again here in the Houston area. Thanks and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the plan, stick to the plan, ask me how I